Hello. Um, this is going to be the beginning of my journal, uh, my journey journal. Um, so I'm going to talk to you first about oh, a little bit about myself and then um, what's been happening, like what's an average day like. Um, so hi, my name is Jen and I am just turned 48. Um, I have a wild career history of being an anthropologist, an archaeologist, a bioarchaeologist, forensic archaeologist, forensic artist, sociocultural advisor, forensic advisor, social cultural specialist, cultural advisor, and cultural mission advisor to special forces. So I have been deployed 10 times, eight of which were as a civilian contractor uh, assigned to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And I was in station at Slayer Base, Iraq, um, but went all over Iraq. Um, on the western side of Iraq from 2005 to halfway through 2007. Uh, and that was for uh, Presidential Order 38 uh, Mass Graves team. And we were the Mass Graves investigation team. And our job was to identify, excavate, analyze, and pull together cases of clandestine mass graves perpetuated by Saddam Hussein during the al Anfal campaign. And our job was to provide that information in case files to the FBI and the Regime Crimes Liaison Office in order to prosecute Saddam and anyone else involved in the al Anfal. My job initially was as a project osteologist, but I worked almost every position on the team um, primarily working as the pathology lab manager and doing illustrations for case files and the analysis, particularly of the majority of our sample, which was 73% children under the age of 13. So that was for the majority of my downrange time, but then I went back uh, as a member of the human terrain regime or a human terrain program. And initially we joined as contractors, but then within the first um, couple months of being there, so it was four months training and then deployment. And during the time that I was there, uh, President uh, Bush ended his presidency and President Obama took over. And I was deployed at Christmas time of 2008. And by January of 2009, we were forced to either resign or become army personnel. So I swore an oath of enlistment, was initially given a DD-214. And then by February, that was changed to an SF-50 with a new coding called an IA-14, which is an Intel code that is basically like a GS-15 rating. Uh, GS-15 is a uh, civilian government employee or civilian army. So nobody knew what we were. Um, it was a whole new program and uh, we were issued uniforms and gear and many of us were issued sidearms and we were told to uh, provide analytical and social culture social cultural um, analysis and advice to companies brigades headquarters whoever we were assigned and attached to i was initially um, supposed to go to iz10 which was outside of baghdad but because i am a little bit uh strong-willed um I was assigned instead to the Marines at Al-Assad. 
So I was out there on a team that was not successful at the time. And when I onboarded, my task was to convince the Marines that we were value added. And you get a very, very, very small window to do that before they basically write you off. Um, so while I was out there for the first few months, we sat and did much of nothing aside from building uh, research plans, etc. And then uh, I came up with a project that was based off of some intel. Um, and the essence of the project was to determine uh, what was happening along the Syrian and Nineveh, Iraq border with al-Assad. So there's Nineveh province and then al-Assad or Anbar province. And Nineveh's to the north and both of them line up against the Syrian border. Um, and I was pulling together all the tribal information and saw that there was not only a high influx of um, cross-border smuggling activity, but there was also the potential for a Kurdish conflict with Iraq that was going to erupt into taken land by the Kurds uh, right as the Article 140 was to be voted on to make Kurdistan an official uh, country, I guess. So there was potential for some serious conflict that our Marines were in the middle of. So I was then uh, swept up by the special forces at Cop Nimmer that was in Nineveh province, and I spent the majority of a year with them. Now, that's important to this story because it was during that time that I was removed from the rest of my team and sent out on my own. And um, when you're out on mission like this or going from base to base and you don't know where you're going to land, you're given the army gear that you have. In my case, it was a very large backpack that was twice my body width and it was called a molly sack and it carried over a hundred pounds, uh, fully packed with your clothing for the week or not the week, but just your, your clothing in general. Um, and then I had some rucksacks that each weighed 70 pounds, one of which I kept on base but the other had my computer gear, body armor, et cetera. So I was carrying a lot of gear with me that totaled over 125 pounds. And on top of that, I had my 45 pounds of body armor. And I was flying in Blackhawks from location to location. And anyone who's been over there knows uh, what they're like. But for you, I'm going to describe it. It's, it's not a landing situation. The, the Blackhawks don't land, they hover at about a five foot off the deck. And you get your gear on and you're yelled at by a bunch of people, whoever's there or the pilots or what have you, you're yelled on and you get your gear on and you jump down and run and you clear the blades. Um, so I would do that with a bunch of gear and it was often in very soft sand that was like talcum powder. Um, so imagine trying to run with a bunch of gear and super soft uh, baby powder. And due to that, I micro fractured my legs in multiple places, but they did not cause me problems. And I didn't know about it because I had built up muscle that held everything and uh, made it so that I did pretty well while I was out there. So I worked at the gym, I worked out, I did a lot of heavy weights. Um, all the while having micro fractures in my legs. Um, apparently this was a common injury with military in the Middle East. Um, so when I came home, uh, I was generally fine because I was at the gym and training a lot. And then I got pregnant. And uh, during my pregnancy with my son, Gabriel, I, it was, I was early in the pregnancy, just like six weeks. I stumbled upon a tiny rock and fell at the USMC base Quantico in Quantico, 
Virginia and I rolled my ankle and the next day at work, I stood up to get a cup of tea in my office and my entire ankle and lower ligaments just snapped and tore. Um, the, because I was pregnant, no one would do surgery and it wasn't going to heal on its own. And so, um, sorry, there's dog barking. Um, so we did the surgery, but it had to happen after Gabriel was born. So that was nine months in a boot. And as a result, I shortened ligaments in my Achilles. So the surgery had to repair ligaments and um, also elongate the Achilles. So this is first part of video one. I'm gonna set up the second video so that we can splice this together.